how are you? I hope you're good. Today I'm here to talk to you about things I've read, i watched and things I'm planning on reading. This month was the first month that I actually finished filling in my trackings, which is very exciting. Now, for the reading, I tried as best as I can to track the hours and the time that I... Because that's basically what I'm tracking now. I'm tracking time instead of pages, which 100% recommend. Makes you feel much better about yourself and it's less pressure. But um, obviously it's hard because you steal little, little bits of the day to read sometimes. So like you have to estimate a little bit. Sometimes you'll forget or if you haven't tracked in a couple of days and you're just estimating. I thought it was a very fun figure to sort of come back to and I think... And approximately this week I have spent 30 hours and 15 minutes reading, which is gonna be fun to compare with the next month. I'm actually not setting myself a goal because I want to have at least a couple of months to compare with, so then I know what sort of is um, average or the norm, because I don't know if this is gonna change a lot or not. For other things that I've tracked, um, I am setting goals and I'm removing some of the things that I've tracked. And I have finished one, two, three, four books. But it's a little bit of a sad one because I have finished four books and none of them went over three stars. And one book I have DNF'd after around 80 pages. Yeah! <laughs> but that's not necessarily saying that I haven't enjoyed any of these books, but let us get into that and chat a little bit. And then I watched three things, so... Let's get on with it. Uh, okay, so the first thing that I read this month was Fire and Highs by Sarah Beth Durst. I really enjoyed it. It was such a good time reading this. This, this follows our main character, Sky, who is a part of a wealthy family in a society where everyone sort of knows that uh, where dragons or wy wyverns exist, basically people who are descendant from dragons or wyverns. There's a slight difference, it's to do with legs and whatnot. And most of these families are very wealthy, so they are treated in society as celebrities. So all of the paparazzi attention and whatnot, it's basically their usual life. Now this family, however, has been sort of disowned by their own kin because of something that her mother has done and she does not know what it is the mother is missing the father is being very mysterious about it and her whole life is sort of falling apart and it's a very interesting world and it's all about sky wanting to restore the honor to her family but most importantly find out what happened to her mother and where is she however she does not get any support from her father so she has to do it all hush hush uh, this is a highs book, as you would know from the title. I would say this is a definitely lighter read and it didn't blow my mind when it comes to writing style or story structure or character development. However, it was so much fun. So you know in like Copile I have different categories and so this book only scored three stars because I will admit that it's not a masterpiece in my mind. It's not something that I will think about for forever, but this is something that I would absolutely reread again if I get really tired or really um, overwhelmed by all of the high fantasies and very difficult plot devices and I would just want something light and fluffy. This was basically like a contemporary but with fantasy and it has it has dragons and it has unicorns and the main character's sense of humor was very much my cup of tea so I thoroughly enjoyed it. So in the enjoyment part it got a 10 which is not often that it gets a 10. However, as I said, I don't think that uh, it was masterfully written work or a piece of literature, but I enjoyed it so much. For the enjoyment alone, I would definitely recommend this when you're looking for something sort of fluffy, really fun, and something that really focuses on family, because this one does, and the brothers, I just love them so much and it focuses on friendship as well. There is definitely some annoying um, parts like the girl really being focused on the boy sometimes and this is your stereotypical, you know, she's gonna do something that really like you're just sad there like, why would you do that? <laughs> very lighthearted. I found it to be very lighthearted. I started off the year pretty fun to be honest, so I can't complain on that part. And then I tried Wake of Vultures, which actually is on my Kindle, so I'm just insert a picture here. This one was a quarterly book club pick. The live stream has already happened, so I will link it down below. I'll try to link it down below if you want to hear spoilery thoughts on it. Um, there were mixed 
thoughts, uh, idea nft it. Uh, one girl gave it, I think, three stars, and the other two gave it four, and they really liked it. So overall, like, a healthy mix of opinions, and this is a story, this is a very unusual story. It's actually a fantasy western about a girl who is living in a time that being both a girl and a person of color is very disadvantageous. So it definitely has a lot going on for it, but the writing style I couldn't get over the writing style and I couldn't get over the language used, which obviously is a Western dialect and it was just a bit too much for me, especially because I am not a big fan of Westerns as far as I've experienced them, like talking movies. Uh, the only thing I really liked was Westworld and that is because mostly it's just a sci-fi. <laughs> However, this is a fantasy and it really shook me when I realized what type of creatures it had. Granted, I only read to the part where we're only talking about like two kinds and I know there's more, uh, but it was very unexpected. It was very interesting. Um, I can see this book being a massive win for a lot of people, so definitely don't get discouraged. Um, but if you have similar taste to me in like writing style and the book and whatnot, then I would also maybe just give it uh, like 10 or 20 pages and then I feel like you should know if you would like it or not. I pushed through to uh, 80 because I wanted to give it a go because it's a quarterly club, but obviously I'm a huge advocate for uh, not finishing books that you don't think you should because there's a number of the books already set in our lifespan and it's not budging, so you have to let go of some books that you're not necessarily loving. And I was not a fan because I felt like in this type of setting I should root for the main character, I should care what happens. But at that point, which is just, this is not a long book, so this was a decent percentage in, I did not care if anyone died. And I started skimming for the last chapter and I was like, you know what? Let's make an educated decision to just stop while I'm ahead. So that was an unfortunate second read of this year, which then was followed by The Renegades. Uh, well, this is actually the book that I finished last in this month, but I started it very early on. It just took me for bloody ever. So this is Renegades by Marissa Meyer, and this is about... In short, honestly, this is X-Men, but in like YA setting and... Oh, that's good, I don't think. Um, somewhat, I feel like an unpopular opinion. I have the live stream later today, so obviously as you are watching, I will link that down below as well if you want to watch it, but I haven't been there yet and I haven't looked at your responses because I keep those for the live stream, so I have no idea what the general reaction was, but I know this is a beloved series, but I think there's mixed reviews. Um, this is a superhero one and we have our two main characters, Nova and... Oh my god, Adrian. <laughs> so Nova comes from the anarchist side, which is all basically Magneto side, and they're all for anarchy, and then Renegades are the goody-goody boys that are all um, superheroes, look at me, a little bit very egotistic, it could be really pompous and not very likable, but then on the other hand, they're, most of them are really have a very good moral compass and do one good things, but it's all just a little bit messed up on both sides. Nova then sort of tries to integrate herself into the Renegades because uh, the anarchists are actually vastly outnumbered and she wants to learn secrets from their side so then they can take them heads on and have a chance. From going blindly in, uh, when I realized what Nova's position is gonna be, because obviously she's gonna get attached to the new team uh, while she's undercover, but also have all of these ties of the people that basically uh, raised her, and I thought this is such a strong setup for someone who's supposed to really been be struggling for what side should she stay loyal to and it's all very morally gray at that point because you just seen stuff from both sides and usually I really like that trope. I felt like I really did not connect with the characters from the anarchist side um, because we didn't explore them. We were so superficial about everyone there that just uh, it, to me, it really lacked that um, punch into your gut of like, you are basically acting against your family and the whole life goal that you had. And so the stakes did not seem high. Um, Adrian, however, I really liked, and I also really liked Nova's backstory. Like the beginning chapter was lovely. I, I, I loved the first chapter. I was like, this is like your superhero story. 
and I really like that setup and it did give motivation for why she's going against Renegades but I think it's just so flimsy in my Cobalt system actually for the characters that got a very very low score I think it was like a 4 because I just felt like there were so many characters which there were by the way there were so many characters maybe a bit too many for the amount that we explored um, and it was such a shame because I thought it really really had potential also very similar to X-Men so it depends if that's a good thing or a bad thing for you it was not all bad, I definitely enjoyed it when I sat down to read it. My main beef with this was that this is way too big for what it is. This was really draggy, but I will say that when I did read it, I did enjoy it. It was picking, picking it back up and sitting down to read for a long while, that was the problem. I did read like this much of the end and in one sitting because that's when things started happening. This is a very slow book and you know me, your girl loves slow books. Most of my favorite books are slow as heck and are critiqued for it. I just still love them because the characters drive it and I'm such a character driven person. But I do think that I like her writing style because whenever I was reading it, it was nice. So I couldn't give it like super low score for that as well. So the writing style I think got the highest score, which is bizarre because I feel like maybe it was just not executed the best way. But when I was reading it and also the superhero part of it, I really did enjoy and there was one character that I did care kind of deeply for and that was Max this little uh, kid that is basically living in isolation I thought his stuff was really cool it wasn't bad it was just not great and it was very draggy I will speak way more about this in my live stream so I will link that down below if you read the book and you want to check it out what I thought and what other people thought because this was the book in the jar then another book that I have read and did not really share the opinion of the majority of the people because this was a very hyped book. Actually, specifically, it was a very hyped audiobook, so I did listen to an audiobook. And um, yeah, that is Sadie. Sadie confused me, namely because it deals with topics like pedophilia and physical and mental abuse addiction, grief, and all of the things that really are supposed to pull at your heartstrings. So trigger warnings for all of that mentioned, however, it doesn't actually... It's more of a like hinted and it really deals more with the victims rather than um, having explicit content with that. So if you are sensitive to those topics, it's not necessarily a book to avoid. Uh, but still still trigger warnings obviously, but um, you would think that I would care so so deeply for these characters, but it was It just was a miss for me. It was just a miss and the two things that I did like about this was one the format that everyone says and you probably have heard before that this is then half podcast and half normal storytelling and in the audiobook it is a full cast audiobook so it does it, our main character does have a stutter so if you're looking for a book with representation for that this one is a good one the only other book that I can think of is Sleeping Giants uh, by by Sylvia Noel not like a super main character and the second thing that I liked about this was the end and I know a lot of people really hated <laughs> the end but I thought it was that was the only part that really like got me in the feels and it was very realistic I felt it was definitely open-ended I know a lot of people don't like that I personally usually really like open-ended ends um, and I thought it definitely delivered a punch that it needed however through the whole book not so much I thought I thought it really lacked pretty much everything and I don't necessarily get the hype but I do understand why some people would think this is a very important read I think it has important topics but that does not necessarily make a book for me I don't think it had the suspense or the drive for me to go and pick that back up the narrators were really good though I will say the audiobook is really good and I think I gave this book the best chance that I could I did finish it so it wasn't terrible not as touching as I would thought it would be. This book is about a girl, Sadie, who's basically acted like a mother figure for her younger sister and her younger sister has been murdered. Uh, now a couple of years I think passed and Sadie has ran away um, and this is in split perspective so one is from Sadie so we see what Sadie has done and the other one is from the podcast. The podcast is trying to find Sadie and inspecting, investigating the whole situation but they are um, a couple steps behind Sadie so we know what happened from Sadie 
first and then they are sort of trailing her. I, I like the setup, I like the idea, I just don't think that it delivered. I thought that there were so many things to explore and I don't think that we got that explanation and it was sacrificed to this very much she did this and she did that and she did this and she spoke to this person and she spoke to that person. There is that one! <laughs> and so this one got two stars from me. And the last one also got two stars from me, and that is the Oracle here. Now, this one was a recommendation from you guys, and I absolutely 100% get why you would have recommended this to me, because in theory, this has a lot of the things that I personally love. This is sort of set in the real world, however, it has a very um, sort of sci-fi fantastical element. So this is a guy who has uh, woken up one day with a set of predictions in his mind. He does not know where they come from, he doesn't know uh, anything really, but knows these facts and over time realizes that they are coming true. He starts up this website where he puts these predictions and then he gets really famous really quickly, but he's keeping his identity secret. Then his friend sort of gives, gives him an idea to contact some investors and banks and actually profit from knowing these specific things and so they do that and they get uh, really filthy rich but obviously they get, an atten they get attention from a lot of independent factors, a lot of religious um, ministries and also the government and they all sort of try and find them and it turns into a more of like a thriller thing. Uh, I really enjoyed the start of this, I really really did, but I think somewhere in the middle they just sort of forgot what this was for and it was quite like draggy and kind of like more chase than any sub- like it just didn't have anything in the middle and then I was really really hoping that the end is gonna deliver because I did wait for that. It didn't. <laughs> the end was just like is this is this it? What? <laughs> um, I don't think I've gotten answers that I wanted um, and in this sort of very strongly driven book for that particular mystery I felt like you cannot do that sort of open-ended end because why? I thought it was a very interesting concept though and I thought that if done a bit better it could have been amazing. Two stars from me on this one. Oh, I feel like this video is such a downer, I'm sorry guys, but like it's just not have been a great reading month for me. I mean, reading wise, I've done quite a bit of reading, but it's just not been of the books that I'm just like, yes, you know, like my new favorite or like four or five stars, hopefully next month though hopefully next month. So I will just quickly mention the books that I am planning on reading either next month or the month afterwards. Those are just mainly the books that I know I will be reading uh, because I leave my TBRs quite like open recently. Uh, but some books for the book clubs. So so the quarterly club has been going on for like a year and a half I think and my pick has never been picked yet because we do it randomly But but during the last stream for Wake of Vultures, we only have three people voting So my chances were good and if I ever win it's with like those chances because apparently I have no luck But my pick has won and I'm so excited because I've been wanting to be in this fandom for so long and Dear God, how I have avoided spoilers, up until this point I will never know, but I have. Um, so I really need to get on to that before I get spoiled. And that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I follow this author on Instagram and I honestly love her personality so much. And if that's any indicator of how this book is gonna be, then I am all there. All I really know is that this is like a high fantasy and that she likes to put her characters through a lot of bad stuff, which is all I ask. Like, I'm entirely blind. Entirely blind. blind. I just know that there's some sort of undercover thing. <laughs> good, good stuff, okay. So this is our quarterly club pick. 27th of April, the live stream for this is 27th of April. Hope you guys join. Even if you have read it already, I hope you guys join so we can all chat about it. Uh, another another book club book is A Book in a Jar. I have not announced this yet on Instagram at the time that I'm filming and the poll has gone out. I will edit this out if another book wins but by the numbers that are going so far I am fairly confident it is gonna be The Gilded Wolves which is very surprising because you now The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo was there and that is a very popular book so I thought that one is probably like has an unfair advantage. This book 
is winning. <laughs> um, and if you've seen this, then this book has won. And this is The Gilded Wolves, like I said, by Roshani Chooks. This is a novel that is set in Paris during a time of extraordinary cha change, one that is full of mystery, decades, and dangerous desires. I think this one was very, very... It has a blurb from Lainey Taylor and Holly Black and Rene Adier. It just basically seems like a lot of people have been loving it, so I'm very excited. I'll try and leave the links to all of these books good reads down below so you can check the synopsis out and if you want it. I uh, really hope you guys join me and this is for February and March. If everything is okay, we should meet on the 31st of March for 9 p.m because I'm moving into a Sunday 9 p.m. Um, live stream for that one. But the Goodreads group is also going to be the place where you guys talk about it. Link all of those down below. And the two things that I'm currently reading, I'm just going to quickly mention them here, which is The Hero of Ages, which is the third and final book of the main trilogy, although they expanded it, so now it has six books. But like the main one, this is the final one. It is a whopper. I'm currently here, so not too far in. And the next thing that I'm reading is Caraval. And I, I'm really enjoying it. I am I am in this point right here, so not quite in the halfway yet, but not too far either. I am actually enjoying it so far. I, I love the atmosphere there. I love that you don't know what is real. It's about two sisters who are basically invited into this Caraval that is very exclusive and it's only a game and it's all illusions and you don't know what is real. And I love that. I love love myself some of that. I will say though, if I had to if I had to point something out though, is that I feel like the writing is a little bit juvenile. The main character Scarlett is such a prude that it drives me nuts sometimes, but I'm sure she's gonna loosen up a little bit. Um, I love the sister Tella so far. Excited to get back into that when I get a chance. And that is everything for what I have read and I'm gonna read. Um, and I will tell you what I have also watched. Um, I haven't watched a lot of things, but the first thing that we did watch was Your Name, the anime. Um, I have read the first volume of the manga, didn't necessarily like it, which was surprising because it's a body swap and I am trash for body swap stories. Wasn't really into the manga, so but people said that the anime is so much better and I really, really enjoyed it. And people were like, you're gonna cry. <laughs> I didn't, which is surprising, because movies make me cry, like, I don't cry in books easily, like, at all, like, I'm, I am a cold-hearted bitch. Movies with the soundtrack and the visuals, they get me, but, no, no, I was okay with this one, so, well done to me. But it was definitely moving, and it was very beautifully done, highly recommend. It's, it's all sorts of messed up when you think about it. Um, we have watched Bandersnatch, which is sort of like an interactive Black Mirror episode, where you make a choice. Uh, Logan really enjoyed it, I thought it was okay, I, I didn't think it was so mind-blowing like but I did enjoy it and it's definitely interesting it's very much black mirror so sometimes it's just like oh so good and then sometimes it's a bit of a mess this one was like a little bit in the middle for me for people who have never played games that are like choice driven this would be would have been so cool I think because I've always liked playing uh, choice games this wasn't as new to me as it might have been to some others, I don't know. Uh, if you are looking for a really good game though, uh, I would highly recommend uh, The Troy Become Human. It's basically, you select all of the choices and they actually have consequences and you see all the choice trees and it's just so, so good. So, highly recommend that. And we've been still watching The Office, or have I not mentioned that before? We watched The Office. I This was a show that I always thought I'm gonna cringe to no end because I re cringe really easily. And I think I tried one episode like ages ago and then didn't really get into it. But oh my god, was I wrong. Like, um, we're watching the American one. We're on like season five now. We're binging it strongly. Um, I love it. I don't know what my life is gonna be after I finish it. It's basically Brooklyn Nine-Nine levels. I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I love The Office, the humor is so me, it does start a bit slow, but then it gets like more like, you know, probably the producers were like, okay, we can actually get away with a lot of these jokes. I love it so much, I don't know what I've been doing, I don't know how the, um, up until this point, I don't know what the British one is, I might try it afterwards, but I feel like I will probably like the American better, I usually do. Um, other than plebs, plebs was amazing. Um, so funny, love it, finally getting to it. I cannot believe I have not watched it until this point, but oh well. And that concludes the wrap up 
for January. So let me know if you've read any of the books that I have read and if you agree with me. If you don't, also let me know, but you know, don't be nasty about it. We all have different opinions, which is fine. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. I hope you enjoy this video. I don't know if I've already posted it or not, but I'm planning on doing favorites videos again. But if I have posted it already, I'll link it down below. Excited for that, I hope you guys like it. Uh, chat to me down in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm gonna stop now because it's probably very long already. Stay awesome, stay kind, and I'll see you next time. Bye!